It is a glorious Sunday afternoon for baseball. It has been a long week of baseball for the Monarchs. Six consecutive home games, and now they look to wrap things up the way they started it with two victories and two losses in between. We'll see if they can sweep the Hamilton Joes here today. Hello and welcome everyone to Flat Rock Field in Flat Rock, Michigan. Perfect day for baseball, early evening that is. I'm Kevin Peel. Lane Schnitz Paxton on the hill. First pitch is a strike to Trey Compton. We are underway at two minutes early here today on this Sunday evening, getaway day, I suppose. And now an 0-1 from Schnitz Paxton is bounced back to the mound. Compton will be tossed out of there. One to three put out, starts things off. Well, let's take a look defensively at the Lake Erie Monarchs and we'll start in the outfield. Schwarzenberger in left, Nwogu in center, Watson is in right. Lambeau and Prater guard the left side of the infield at third and short. Weiler and Balgard second and first guarding the right side. Schnitz Paxton and Griffin Mazur, the starting catcher here today. Now Justin McConnell, the shortstop, will try and bunt towards the third base side. Schnitz Paxton falls down on the mound and that will be as easy of an infield single as you're gonna see. A bunt single. And just like that, the Hamilton Joes get their first hit of the day. Monarchs coming into this game at 9 and 15, and they are currently five and a half back of first place Lima in the north, while the Hamilton Joes are in fourth place in the south. They are seven back of Southern Ohio. The top three teams from each division will make it into the postseason with the three and the two seeds playing a one-game playoff. Now here's Griffin Dorsheen. Pitches inside for ball one to Griffin. Griffin had himself a great game yesterday. Two doubles, couple RBIs, two for four effort. And what was a 6-4 Monarchs win. Now ground ball over to third, could be two, but Lambeau throws it away towards second base as Weiler didn't get to the bag quick enough, it appeared. That was part of the problem. And so it will be a throwing error on the Monarchs. And Lambeau leads the team in errors. That was a big miscue. Should have been two. And instead, runners at first and third. That is a tough break for Lane Schnitz Paxton. University of Toledo Rocket making the start here today. Yeah, just not quite sure what happened. But nonetheless, Monarchs are in a hairy situation right out of the gate. Now here's a ground ball to second. Lambeau with another chance to Weiler. Throw to first. Double play. <laughs> so don't wait too long because you could get your opportunity to make the same play all over again, and that's exactly what Lambeau was able to do. The Hamilton Joes will not score in the bottom of the first inning. We will head to the or to the top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first. No score. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball.
Bottom one here in Flat Rock, and the Monarchs and the Joes are scoreless. First pitch to Caleb Baugard is flown foul out of play. So nothing in one on the Indiana University product. Caleb, the hero of last night's game with a two-run homer in the bottom of the eighth, which helped propel the Monarchs to victory. Pitch misses outside, ball one. Ryan Middendorf, the starting pitcher today for the Hamilton Joes as he gets the baseball. And the pitch, fly ball, deep left field. It's hooking towards the corner. Will it stay fair? And it is fair, a home run. Caleb Baugard has hit home runs in back-to-back -back at bats. And the Monarchs are on the board right away in the bottom of the first with a leadoff homer from Caleb Baugard to take a one nothing lead. Well, that was a blast by Baugard as he clears the fence for his third time this year. RBI number 11, he increases that 328 batting average, which is a team high entering today. So talk about confident swings from Balgarn after last night's home run. And he gets it done here with a quick big fly to left. Big fly Balgarn strikes again. And now a swinging bunt by Will Prater. It's down the third base line. Will it stay fair? And it will be foul <laughs> as Frank Barquette was dashing in between infielders there. So Prater going to have to come back to home plate. Frank Barquette, our home plate umpire here today, showing off his wheels. And Grant Henderson, the base umpire. On a splendid day for baseball, the wind is blowing out, and that may have aided Baumgarten's home run just a little bit. It's been coming in for the past couple days, so things have changed up a little bit. 80 degrees, sunny. Couldn't ask for much better. Southeast winds at 8. And the pitch misses to Prater for ball one. Yeah, southeast winds at 8. We got our game going three minutes early here tonight. 1-1, one, one. and Prater takes inside. And it's two balls and a strike. Will Prater from Western Carolina University. Batting average of 205. One run batted in this year as he makes his 11th appearance. 2-1. Swing, fly ball, deep right center. Thayman and Kaufman moving towards the alleyway. It will be Thayman calling for it and making the catch near the warning track. Out number one here in the bottom of the first, Ryan Middendorf has had a lot of solid contact against him right out of the gate. Now the defensive alignment for the Hamilton Joes, Compton, Thayman, Kaufman left to right in the outfield. Coffey, McConnell, Miller, Dorshane left to right on the infield. Middendorf and Hall, Michael Hall, doing the catching here today. One out and a run in for the Monarchs, and a slider is over for strike one. The outside corner to Jordan Nwogu. Knocked in a couple RBIs yesterday, did Nwogu. Also had a solo homer in the seventh that tied the game. 313 batting average, three home runs at 13 RBIs. Another slider misses outside. It's one ball and one strike. So you got a lot of threes going on in there. But it's been a, a good start for the University of Michigan Wolverine. 1-1 one, one fastball over the outside corner at the knees. Strike two. Trying to keep it away from... Wogu is Ryan Middendorf. Was not successfully able to do that against Balgar. Now a 1-2, deep fly ball, left field. It's a low liner, and it's off the top of the fence and stays in the yard. Now Wogu's got to get on his horse to get the second, and he will with a stand-up double. So Nwogu with a low line drive, and it almost cleared the fence. And left field. So the ball just flying off the bats. Three balls hit to the outfield. One of them a fly out from Prater. One homer and one double to start off. Things going the way the Monarchs would like early. one nothing Lee. For Nwogu, that is his fourth double of the season. Now Robert Bell, the DH, will stand in with a 327 batting average, three homers and 12 RBIs. One out and a runner at second. Fastball low and in, ball one. Robert Bell, the switch hitting designated hitter from Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida. 
Just a beautiful area. A lot of great baseball there, too. 1-0 to Bell, and it's under the arms for ball two. He has to back up off the plate. Bell is a Florida boy, upcoming sophomore at Bethune-Cookman. He is from Palm Coast, Florida, 6'2", 185 pounds. Middendorf pitches, fly ball, center field. Thayman backing up, still going back, and it's over his head and off the fence. Nwogu around third, he's coming home. Into second is Bell with an RBI double as Nwogu crosses the plate standing up. Monarch's bats are lights out right now. As that is the third hit of the game, they are all extra base hits. Driving in a run is Robert Bell as he picks up his 13th RBI of the season. And just like that, it's 2-0 Monarchs here in the bottom of the first. Monarchs have allowed a first inning run in the last three days, and today they're the ones that are coming out and swinging the big sticks. Just not letting Middendorf settle in whatsoever. Now Lambeau will fly a ball towards shallow left field. Going out was McConnell giving way to Compton, who was charging in. He'll make the call and the catch. Two outs now here in the bottom of the first. Two runs in for the Monarchs. Man at second, they lead it 2 nothing. Bad news if you're a Ryan Middendorf fan is that Monarchs have put every single ball in the air early on, which is a bit of a precarious situation. So here's Griffin Mazur, starting catcher. Sixth man to bat in the inning. Middendorf delivers strike one. Griffin Mazur this year off to a 222 start, two home runs and eight RBIs. The home runs coming earlier on in the campaign. Starting his 11th game, 0-1. And the curveball will go well away for ball one. Nice block by Michael Hall, the catcher. Very sunny day, just pristine here in Flat Rock. On one, and Mazer pops one up. Right side going well foul back out towards Diamond 2, which is behind us and to our right. Four fields here at Flat Rock Community Fields, and this is the fifth season that the Monarchs have played baseball here. Beautiful facility, great youth baseball facility as well. Numerous tournaments every weekend. One, two. And a swing and a miss, strike three. Pulling the string on him was Middendorf. He gets his first strikeout, but not before the Monarchs are able to capitalize. They get two runs on three hits. They'll leave a man on here in the first. A homer for Caleb Balgard and an RBI double from Robert Bell and put the Monarchs in the lead early, two zip after one. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com.
Lake Erie Monarchs lead it 2 0 over the Hamilton Joes as the top of the second inning will begin. Lane Schnitz Paxton working with the lead. His first pitch to Colin Homan is a fastball that burns the outside corner for strike one. Colin Homan was the starting catcher last night for the Joes. He will DH today and bat in the five hole. A one and swing and a miss, chasing the low fastball. No balls and two strikes. Holman up to 283 with the batting average, has three runs batted in. 14th game he's played in. 0-1 floats high from Schnitz Paxton, 1-2. Schnitz Paxton had just a six pitch top of the first inning. He's able to work around a single and an error. 1-1, one, one. or 0-2, oh, 1-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that's the first strikeout for late Schnitz Paxton. So for some reason I said wad wad because the scoreboard was wrong. And then uh, it was 1-2. So, nonetheless, strikeout. And Schnitz Paxton off and rolling on a good side of things here in the top of the second. I'll bring up Chandler Miller. Swings and fouls one off at the plate. 0-1. Oh Chandler Miller hitting 247 with no homers and nine RBIs. And a pitch outside, that will be ball one. Well, the lineups, of course, were posted online for Hamilton. They made a late change defensively. 1-1, one, one. got the outside corner at the knees. 1-2, and two. Schnitz Paxton is ahead. As Jared Kaufman, who was originally starting in right, moved to third, up and in, ball two, with a breaker. And Addison Coffey, initially the third baseman, as he was last night for the Hamilton Joes. He'll start in right. 2-2, two, two, a ground ball back up the middle. Prater ranging over, will not get there. And it's a one-out single for the Joes here in the top of the second inning. Second hit of the game for Hamilton. And Chandler Miller, who was... A little bit quiet yesterday. 0 for 3 with a walk. But he did score two runs. So he gets his first hit of the series. Here comes Michael Hall, starting catcher. The pitch. And it's high and tight. It turns him away from home. Ball one. 2 nothing Monarchs here in the top half of the second. Man at first with one down. Michael Hall with a 238 batting average, four RBIs. One out. Fastball outside corner strike. Even at one and one. This is the Monarchs' first home game that has not started at 7.05 here at Flat Rock Field. Of course, three of the Monarchs' home games initially scheduled were changed to a different site. One one. Over the top of a changeup swings Hall. One and two. Playing a couple games, so the Richmond Jazz doubleheader a couple weeks ago on Sunday. That was played at Siena Heights University in Adrian. 1-2. Curveball back to the mound. It's caught by Schnitz Paxton. He'll throw to first to double off the base runner Miller. What a play by Lane Schnitz Paxton. He caught the scorcher back to the mound, and Miller is doubled off. Second double play already hit into by the Hamilton Joes, and it could have been three, if you will because of the error by Alex Lambeau. But nonetheless, the Monarchs do not allow a run and Schnitz Paxton works around a single. We go to the bottom half of the second, two nothing Lake Erie Monarchs on the Monarchs radio network.
Keegan Watson to lead off the events in the home half of the second inning. And Lake Erie looking for the sweep of the Hamilton Joes. They have the early 2-0 advantage. Middendorf comes home, first pitch of the inning. Strike one called to Keegan Watson. University of Nebraska Cornhusker swatting 194 with three runs driven in. 0-1. And a curve ball is fouled off to the right of home. No balls and two strikes now. Ryan Middendorf, the starter today for Hamilton from Westchester, Ohio. He is very tall, 6'6", 200 pounds, from Lake Erie College. 0-2. And a pitch misses down low, 1-2. and two. Although from my perspective, being uh, well under 6 feet tall, all these players are pretty tall, at least according to me. But still 6'6", pretty tall, and he looms large on the mound. 1-2 is high and tight. 2-2 two and two now on Keegan Watson. Upcoming junior at Lake Erie College, but boy, his numbers have been spectacular. And he has won his last three decisions throughout the last three starts. 2-2, two, two. and it's low and away, ball three. He has won all three of his decisions but he's won his last three starts. He has a 3-0 record with a 2.03 earned run average through his first five starts of the summer. Payoff to Watson. And a fly ball foul well out of play towards the bullpen area of the Joes. 3-2. and two. So when he allowed two runs out of the gate, it was a bit of a shock to see uh, Middendorf allow the home run to Balgarn and then a solid contact in the rest of the inning. Now another fly ball towards right center field. Thayman and Coffee converging. Thayman will make the catch. A two-handed grab. One up, one down. Bottom of the second inning for the Lake Erie Monarchs. Up to zip. Here comes Zach Schwarzenberger. The University of Toledo Rocket hitting 220 this year, and he has one RBI. He's in the eight hole today and starting in left. Fastball outside for ball one. Schwarzenberger is a switch hitter, and he's gotten plenty of at bats from the right side this summer, as well as the left side. One up. And a fastball foul tip into the mitt for strike one. Ryan Middendorf. Has thrown 31 innings through his first five starts, so averaging over six innings a start. That's not shabby. 1-1, one, one, inside, and it hit him. Schwarzenberger couldn't get out of the way. The slider converging on him. And so Middendorf hits a man. With one down here in the bottom of the second, good speed on the base paths in the form of Ryan Middendorf. Or off of Ryan Middendorf in the form of Zach Schwarzenberger. Now Cubby Weiler, the batter for the Monarchs. 2-0, Lake Erie in the lead. Kelby, the former Rice Owl, now Lamar University Cardinal. Looks at strike one at the knees. Nothing in one. He's been welcomed back near home. He's from Village Mills, and Lamar not too far away from there. 213 average, 10 runs batted in for Kelby this summer. 0-1, in on the hands, popped up, foul, straight back. No balls and two strikes to count. Schwarzenberger getting his lead off of first base, a modest lead. As Middendorf is looking in for the side, gets it, and throws over to first. It's late and it gets away, and it'll go down the first base line. Dorshing didn't look like he could even get his glove near it. And it'll be a throwing error against the pitcher, Middendorf, which allows Schwarzenberger to get, to get into scoring position with just one out here in the bottom of the second. The communication not quite there for Middendorf and Dorshin, and it leads to the defensive miscue. So each team now has an error, and we have played an inning and a third. And the pitch to Weiler misses down and away. One ball and two strikes to count. Weiler 
playing in his 22nd game of the year. He had to enter two nights ago in relief of Bobby Head, who had to leave the game with an apparent hamstring injury. That was supposed to be Weiler's day off. 1-2 is fouled back over our heads. And it's still 1-2 on Weiler. One out in the second, two runs in already for the Monarchs in the first to take the two-run lead. Ryan Middendorf coming into today's start has 25 strikeouts to three walks over eight to one ratio. Scary good. One, two, and there's another strikeout. Down goes Kelby Weiler looking. Second strikeout for Middendorf is 27th of the season, and there are two outs here in the second. Caleb Balgard will come up for the second time for Lake Erie. We already know what Big Fly Balgard did the first time. He launched one over the left field fence to put the Monarchs in the lead. Just one batter in. The pitch, and it's a curveball low and away, ball one. We'll see if Middendorf tries to keep the ball away from him this time. Middendorf has allowed 23 hits coming into this start today. And we talked about his great numbers as the 1 0 it comes home, and it's downstairs, two ball count. But how great he's been really was a culmination of all of that in his start against the Settlers this past week. 5 nothing shutout victory for Hamilton, in which Middendorf tossed eight, allowed three hits and seven strikeouts while facing 28. Well, he was lights out on that night. Look towards second, towards Schwarzenberger. The 2-0 is swung on and fouled back by Balgard to make it two balls and a strike. And you look even further back in his last 20 innings, he's only allowed three earned runs and four runs in total. So it's been quite a campaign for Middendorf. The 2-1, fly ball, deep left field, and this one is going in towards the glove of Thayman, he'll make the catch. It was closer to center, but that's the final out here in what is ultimately a scoreless bottom of the second inning. The Monarchs get one on, but leave him stranded via a hit by pitch. We're through two innings here in Flat Rock. It's the Monarchs 2 and the Joes nothing. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Well, the six-game homestand is coming to an end here today, but remember to come on out in 10 days. So start to look ahead. The Lima Locos will be coming to town to take on your Lake Erie Monarchs in a two-game series right after the All-Star break. So come on out, enjoy your favorite baseball team, and have a blast here at Flat Rock Field. We're on to the third inning. Swing and a foul tip at the plate for strike one to Addison Coffey. It'll be Coffey, Thayman, and Compton, 8, 9, and 1 in the Hamilton order. It's a 2-0 Lake Erie lead, a 1. Two-seamer stays up and away. Ball and a strike. Lane Schnitz-Paxton, the University of Toledo Rocket from Napoleon, Ohio, deals, and it's low and away, 2-1. and one. While we were talking about how great Middendorf has been this year, and Lane Schnitz-Paxton has most certainly had his moments of brilliance also. So battle of heavyweight pitchers on the mound. 2-1, another foul ball at home. 
Level count on Coffee, two and two. Coffee hitting 194, a homer and 10 driven in this year. He's going to adjust his batting gloves real quickly. Joe's, after wearing the black tops yesterday, they bring out the red jerseys today for this series finale. Break even, stays high, and will be a full count on Coffee. Black numbers, gold trim on the back, Hamilton in script on the chest. Gray slacks with red stripes down the side. 3-2. And a fastball is fouled off. That will go over the third base dugout. A chopper hit by Coffey. Count remains full. Lane Schnitz, Paxton dealing to Coffey. Monarchs in the home whites as per usual. 3-2, fastball again lifted out of play, foul. Going to give it a look as Balgard, but he'll watch it land out of play. Eighth pitch of the at-bat will be coming up here in the top of the third. Schnitz Paxton has been so efficient so far through two innings, less than 20 pitches. 3-2, and Coffey with a Baltimore chop foul down the third base line. Keep on kicking. Monarchs with the white jerseys, the navy blue pinstripes on the slacks and the jerseys, tricolored caps. Schnitz Paxton throws, and here's a grounder in the field to play to Lambeau. As to Bombo initially, but throws over. Balgard with the stretch, got him. Out number one. Lambo already with an error today, trying to shrug that one off, and has done so, making two consecutive plays in the field. Top three, one down, nobody on. Two nothing, Hamilton trailing Lake Erie. And the next man up is Tyler Thayman. Batting in the nine hole once again today. Thayman whacks one towards short, and Prater will catch it on a line. That was scorched hard off the bat, but in the right spot was Prater to make the catch. So a quick out for Schnitz Paxton, and there are two down and no one on here in the third. Back to the top of the order with Trey Compton. Grounded out back to the mound his first time. Pop-up foul heading out of play to the right of home. Brings the count to nothing and one. Compton with the second highest batting average on the team of just under 310 entering play today with eight runs batted in. 0-1 and a curve ball back to the screen. No balls and two strikes to count. The tricolored caps that the Monarchs have, a blue lid, white on the front, navy blue on the sides. 0-2 curve ball, ooh, ball one outside. And Schnitz Paxton, if you're watching on the camera, started dashing off the field. Thought he had him. Pretty good pitch, but he'll have to try another. 1-2. Yep, there it is. Strike three. Dandy of a breaking ball. And that drops in. Strikeout number two for Lane Schnitz Paxton. And he has worked through three scoreless innings here to begin this start. Middle of the third, Hamilton trailing Lake Erie to nothing. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball.
Well, Prater next up for the Lake Erie Monarchs. He will start the events here in the bottom of the third with the Monarchs in the lead by a score of two to nothing. Ryan Middendorf throws and a fly ball lifted to left. Right at Compton who will reach up and make a one-handed catch. First man down here in the bottom of the third. And that will bring up Jordan Nwogu. One pitch out, crucial for Ryan Middendorf who's still trying to shake off that bottom of the first inning in which Monarchs got a solo homer from Caleb Balgard and an RBI double from Robert Bell to take the lead. Jordan Nwogu was the man who scored on that play. He doubled ahead of Bell. Middendorf pitches, strike one. That was a great curveball. And it's nothing in one. Right-handed batter, Jordan Wogu against the righty Middendorf, a one. And it's down in the dirt, blocked by the catcher Hall, one and one. One thing you'll notice about both these pitchers, they pitch with pace. They don't like to take a lot of time. When the batter's ready, they go. So Middendorf does here, and this one's popped up on the infield to the left side. Kaufman and McConnell in the area. It'll be Kaufman's play to make. He does so. And they're two outs now in the bottom of the third as the first two Monarchs are down. Here comes the aforementioned Robert Bell, who doubled home Nwogu in the first to bring in the second run. Monarchs in the lead to zip. And the pitch. And it will be low and maybe a touch inside for ball one. So Robert Bell continuing to do a great job at the plate. He has been money as of late for this Monarchs offense. At the knees, strike one for Middendorf. One ball and one strike on Robert Bell. Middendorf comes home. Breaking ball on the ground over to first. Tough hop for Dorsey. He'll field it himself and jog on over to the bag. Three unassisted, Robert Bell is out of there, and the Monarchs go down in order in the bottom of the third. First time they've gone in order here today. We're through three innings here at Flat Rock Field. Hamilton trailing the Lake Erie Monarchs by a score of two to nothing. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Number six, Series finale between the Hamilton Joes and Lake Erie Monarchs. It's gone in favor of the home team so far through three innings. Monarchs lead it 2 nothing over the Hamilton Joes. Appreciate you tuning in on this wonderful Sunday evening for baseball. Kevin Peel here with you. Lane Schnitz Paxton ready to go. First pitch is a two-seamer inside. Almost hits Justin McConnell. Ball one. Connell with a bunt single that was well placed down the third base line. Schnitz Paxton stumbled coming off the mound and couldn't make a play on it. Here at 1 0 is chopped over towards short, tough hop for Prater. Fields double clutches, throws, and Balgard couldn't dig it out of there. And it most likely will be an infield single for McConnell. No real error on that play. So that'll be hit number three in the game for the. Hamilton Joes, and both teams have three hits now. That's the start the Joes need here in the fourth. 
down in the game, two runs. Number nine. So a little chopper over to short. So here's Griffin Dorshing. Talented hitter reached on an error in the first. And a curveball at the knees for strike one. Langstens Paxton was able to help lead the Monarchs to a victory. Didn't pitch his best last Sunday in Tecumseh, Ontario, but they got the win 11 to seven to salvage one of the series. Pitches down low, throw down to second. Prater with the tag and the runner safe. Did not get it down. Looked like Prater wasn't at the bag in time. And so Justin McConnell will swipe a base. And now time will be called. Hamilton pretty aggressive on the base paths per usual. They steal a ton of bases. Although the Monarchs were up to the task of defending well yesterday. 1-1 one, one count on Dorshing with a man in scoring position, no one out. Now Dorshing will pop one up, and this will get foul out of play straight behind home. Ball and two strikes. Monarchs done with home games until after the All-Star break. And once you get beyond the All-Star break, you got less than two weeks left in the season. One, two. And there's a swing and a foul tip. Went in and out of the mid of Mazer. And Dorshing stays alive. Monarchs will play the Lima Locos after the All-Star game, which comes on July 17th at Prasco Park in Mason. Beautiful facility, Mason, Ohio, which is down by Hamilton, just about 15 minutes away. 1-2, her ball alone outside. Even count on Dorshing, 2-2. Two, two. And continuing to blow the flag out in center field. Blowing it towards the left field corner. Schnitz Paxton and Mazer agree, and he comes home with a break even swing and a miss. Down goes Dorshing on strikes. Lane Schnitz Paxton now has struck out two of the last three hitters. He's up to three punch Number outs for the game. Two, One out in the fourth, two, the visiting half of the fourth. Joe is with a man on second, down to nothing. Here's Jared Kaufman. Took the first pitch he saw and hit into a 5-4-3 double play to end the first. He'll bunt here and it will go foul down the path towards the vacant third base on deck circle. No balls and one strike. Over in the vicinity of Preston Baker, who's currently taking photographs for us. He also runs the scoreboard. And helps out writing stories and whatnot. He's broadcasted before last year. He made it on uh, Monarchs Radio. 0-1. Oh, and it comes inside and hit him in the forearm, it appeared, of Jared Kaufman. So both pitchers have now hit a batter. Still at second is McConnell. At first base is Jared Kaufman with one out in the fourth. And here comes Colin Homan. Homan struck out swinging back in the second inning to begin the frame. I'll have to get you a scoring a scoreboard update as we go along here. So many important games, although let me tell you, I saw an 18-16 score that we'll have to look into. It was involving the Saginaw Sugar Beets in a home victory, I think, against the Steam. So we'll take a peek at that. Swing and a miss. Two-seam fastball in on the hands for strike one to Holman. Holman's been swinging a hot stick lately, and no exception last night. Went two for four in that game, although it was caught stealing once. A one, and another two-seamer inside, and Holman waves and misses. Two-strike count. Monarchs playing for the double play up the middle with Prater and Weiler. Guarding the lines are the corner infielders, Lambeau and Balgard. A Two-strike pitch, curveball, swing and a miss. Down goes Colin Homan. Second K of the inning for Schnitz Paxton, four in the game. And Hamilton now will have to lean on Chandler Miller to try and drive it a run. Down two to zip here in the top of the fourth. 
Chandler Miller singled in the second. The pitch, and that two-seamer running inside for ball one. Boy, when Schnitz Paxton gets that arsenal going, you see that two-seamer just diving inside on right-handed batters. So tough to hit. 1-0. And there it is again, although it was a little bit high. And it's 2-0. Lane Schnitz Paxton pitching to Chandler Miller. The two ball delivery, and that one's over the inside corner, though not too far different from where his other pitches were, two and one. Lane Schnitz Paxton has a four pitch arsenal, two seam, change up, curve, slider. And he throws them all for strikes. Two one, there's another strike over the outside edge. So he brought that two seamer back. And it's two balls and two strikes. Deuces are wild now with. Two down in the top of the fourth. The 2-2, two -two and a little number past the mound. It will roll towards Weiler at second. He has it and throws on to first. Final out here in the bottom, rather top of the fourth inning, which is a scoreless one for the Hamilton Joes as they have a man reach on a single and a hit by pitch, but they do not score. And Hamilton has left three on early in the game. Middle of the fourth. Monarchs in the lead, 2-0. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball. Make sure to follow your favorite baseball team on Facebook, Twitter, uh, at these handles, at GLL underscore Monarchs on Twitter, Facebook, Lake Erie Monarchs, and also the official website is LakeErieMonarchs.com, where you can find all the information on your favorite baseball team. Alex Lambeau swings and lines one just foul down the third base line to start off the bottom of the fourth. Just a hair foul, says home plate umpire Frank Barquette. Count nothing and one on Lambeau. Mazer and Watson will follow against Ryan Middendorf in the fourth. 0-1 oh, and a pop-up. Hit down the right field line. It's dropping fast and it's a fair ball. And both the uh, fielders will collide in foul ground. That was Miller and Coffey, although they both are able to stand up. And they are okay, which is the good news. Grant Henderson all over that one to make sure that that ball dropped in fair, and it most certainly did just on the chalk. Monarchs get hit number four, and Alex Lambeau has his first hit of the day. So now here's Griffin Mazer. Mazer struck out to end the bottom of the first. Hoping for the double play ball is Middendorf. Strike one. The curveball is grooved in there, 0-1. Ryan Middendorf has won his last three starts going back to June 22nd, a 4-1 win against Grand Lake. Ray allowed one earned run in six frames. Fly ball hit deep towards center field. Thayman backing up slowly on the track. will reach up and make the grab. Mazer hit it hard. Wrong part of the park. 
One man down here in the bottom of the fourth, and back to first goes Lambeau. Dimensions of Flat Rock Field, 325 down into the left field corner, 315 into the right field corner, and it's 375 to dead center field. Keegan Watson, the batter, fly out his first time, and on the hands, a number foul to the screen, no balls and a strike. 2-0 Lake Erie in the lead. Monarchs sporting the stirrups as they always do. The green ones here today with the uh, two white stripes and one navy blue stripe. All one from Middendorf. Fastball high will level off the count and a ball and a strike. Third baseman Kaufman playing just inside that bag, depth-wise from home plate. Break-even pitch is low and outside. Two and one on Keegan Watson. Nebraska Cornhusker has done a lot of things for this Monarchs team this year, including logging some innings with the bullpen being down a man or two or three. Two one and fouled off to the right side of home. Two balls, two strikes. And with all the players down, the uh, Monarchs were uh, able to add a, another pitcher here today to try and help out. Evan Floor is still on the comeback trail from a fever and an ear infection. A break even, and it's up and in. So full count now on Keegan Watson. That pitcher is lefty from Wayne State University, Brendan Wetmore, a senior from Westland, Michigan, who has joined the team and is hoping to log some innings. Throw over to first and back in safely as Lambeau standing. Adds another lefty to this pitching staff, which has a decent amount of them, up to five now. And Watson will foul one off high in the air. That will get out of play near the Hamilton Joe's bullpen. Still full on Keegan Watson. Still waiting to hear how things are going to pan out for Bobby Head. And it appears Kel Boardwine right now is not available. Another payoff, and it's taken for strike three. Throw down to second. That's a strike him out. Throw him out. Double play. And that's going to end the inning just like that. As Keegan Watson wasn't able to pull the trigger and then thrown out two to four to end the inning was Alex Lambeau caught stealing. So that does not pay off for the Monarchs. They do not score in the bottom of the fourth, but heading to the fifth, they still have a 2 nothing lead. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Michael Hall swings at the first pitch in the top of the fifth and grounds it underneath the glove of Will Prater into left center field. 
We'll see. Uh, that was probably a ball that Prater should have made a play on. That will be an error. Although, tough to tell if he touched it, which if he didn't touch it, technically that wouldn't be an error. But we're going to rule it an error to start things off in the top of the fifth. Second error of the game for the Monarchs. 2-0 the score for Lane Schnitz Paxton and the Monarchs. And a slider misses outside. Able to knock it down was Mazer, the catcher. Ball one. Addison Coffey 0 for 1 with a ground out to third his first time. Monarchs with two runs on four hits, two errors, and they've now left two on base. 1 0 pitch missed outside, 2 and nothing. No runs on three hits, an error, and Hamilton has stranded three on the base pass through four innings. Schnitz Paxton delivers, and a foul tip into the mitt for strike one. Let's take a look at that out-of-town scoreboard. A lot of action going on, and a couple games have already gone final here today. Earlier starts. 2-1, and a ground ball will roll to the left of the third base line. Two balls, two strikes. Well, putting it lightly, what a slugfest it was today in Saginaw. The Sugar Beats beat the Cincinnati Steam by a score of 18-16. to So not only did you have a close game, but you had an absolute slug slugfest. That is not what is going on here in Flat Rock. 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss. Addison Coffey strikes out. Lane Schnitz Paxton with five Ks here in the game. And it's through four and a third innings. Two zip Monarchs, one out, top five, and a man at first for the Joes. It's Michael Hall. Here's Tyler Thayman coming up, lined out to short. His first at bat. Swings right away and chops one off the top of the dugout. Foul, nothing in one. St. Clair Green Giants got a close win over Southern Ohio, 8-7. to seven. So those are both bad results for the Monarchs with the Northern team coming out as the winner. Both the teams in the South, the leaders losing. High and tight, ball one, levels the count on Thayman. Also a close game right now in Grand Lake, Salina. The Mariners are tied with the Xenia Scouts, 1-1. And a curveball is a swing and a miss. Throw down to second. Did Weiler get the tag down? Yes, he did. He's caught stealing. Oh, boy, that was close. Thayman swung and missed. And Weiler had to reach over really quickly to slap it down, the tag, and he did. So that erases the base runner. And there's two down in the fifth, and Schnitz Paxton could get out of it right here. And he gets a swing and a miss from Thayman. They'll have to throw down to complete the strikeout. They do. He's out of there two to three. And Lane Schnitz Paxton, while a base runner got on via an error, he's able to work around it and collects two more strikeouts in a scoreless top of the fifth. Middle of the fifth inning, we are halfway home here in Flat Rock. Monarchs two and the Joes nothing. This is your home for Monarchs baseball.
from the University of Toledo, the left fielder. Bottom five here at Flat Rock Field, a glorious evening for baseball. And we're moving quite swiftly, aren't we? Great pitching is the reason for that. Zach Schwarzenberger against Ryan Middendorf. Swing and a miss, strike one. Schwarzenberger was hit by a pitch in the second and was left at second base. The pitch, Middendorf able to sling a strike in there over the inside corner, 0-2. Monarchs got two runs in the bottom of the first on a solo homer by Caleb Balgard and an RBI double by Robert Bell. That's it. 0-2, low. Ball and two strikes on Schwarzenberger. And that's been it. Hamilton Joes have not had an answer for Lane Schnitz Paxton today. 1-2 floated high and away. Even count two balls and two strikes on Schwarzenberger. Weiler and Balgard also do up in the inning. The 2-2. And a ground ball will go foul past third base coach Brad Merritt. Two balls, two strikes. Brad Merritt in his second game as the third base coach down there for the Monarchs. He also runs the pitching. First year with Lake Erie. Dale Gray down there at first base. Coach. 2-2 inside. Full count. And the seventh pitch of the at-bat will be coming up. Dale Gray, of course, the former Irish Hills Leprechauns manager. Payoff pitch. And a pop-up will find its way foul back towards Diamond 4 behind the third base dugout. Still full on Schwarzenberger. Hamilton Joes for the first series that Dale Gray had 3-2. And a liner foul back to the screen will keep it at 3-2. So Dale Gray around in this league. Of course, Jim DeSena, the GM, was around in this league when Hamilton fired up their franchise in 2008. Another full count pitch, and it's inside ball four. Able to coax a walk is Zach Schwarzenberger, and the leadoff man is on here in the fifth. Great patience at the plate by Schwarzenberger. That's the, just the first walk for Middendorf. It's actually the first walk of the game either way. Lane Schnitz Paxton has no walks right now through five innings of work. Now Kelpie Weiler was rung up in the second inning. Weiler swings and lines one foul back to the screen behind home. No balls and a strike. And our camera did not quite survive that, so we'll have to adjust accordingly here in the fifth inning. Oh, one. And a fly ball hit towards center field. Charging in is Thayman, and he'll make the catch. Back to first goes Schwarzenberger, and there's one out here in the bottom of the fifth. The Monarchs with the 2-0 lead. And that'll bring up Caleb Balgard. Balgard today is one for two with a solo homer and a fly out. There we go, that's a little better. Balgard got the scoring started with a nice shot to the left field corner. And the slider will miss outside. Ball one to Balgard. Nice lead off first for Schwarzenberger. 1-0. Line drive scorched towards right field. It's coming down fast, and it will couple hop into the fence. Schwarzenberger got a nice start. He's rounding third. He's heading home. The throw to the plate is... Online and Schwarzenberger safe as he got in. Just past the tag of Michael Hall. And in the process, Caleb Balgard is up to third with an RBI triple, his second RBI of the game. And the Monarchs take a 3 nothing lead. 12th RBI of the season for Caleb Balgard who continues to hit the ball all over the yard. A close play at the plate and Balgard Able to put it into the corner. Schwarzenberger slid nicely around the tag. No argument from the Hamilton Joes, and it's 3-0. 
Schwarzenberger scored all the way from first on that play. So a triple for Balgard, and we really haven't seen a lot of triples this year out of the Monarchs offense. In fact, that's the first one of the entire season. Swing and a miss, strike one by Will Prater. To Will Prater, who has flown out twice. Monarchs coming into today at 41 doubles. They had 17 homers. They've added to both of those, but that's their first triple of the season. 0-1, inside corner strike to Will Prater, nothing in two. So Ryan Middendorf now has allowed five hits, but when he has allowed hits, they've usually been big ones. Monarchs have four extra base hits in their five hits today. 0-2, and Prater chased one off the corner, but was able to nub it foul to the backstop. Still 0-2 on Prater, left-handed hitting shortstop against the righty Middendorf. The infield is in for Hamilton as they're trying to keep themselves within your shot here. There's only one out in the inning. Balgard at third. 0-2. Prater, ground ball over towards first. Dorshin will field it. Now he'll have no play as Balgard was able to bluff him enough coming home that he hesitated, he had no help, and an infield single for Will Prater. Will be the sixth hit of the game. So that's good news, nobody is out on a play that could have easily been an out. But it does set up the double play opportunity as well with Jordan Wogu has a lot of speed. He's doubled and popped out today, along with scoring a run. Middendorf pitches, a slow curveball. Wogo is way out in front, 0-1. 3-0 Monarchs, bottom of the fifth. And runners on the corners. Middendorf throws, and a liner left, base hit. Drops down with a couple hops in front of the left fielder, Compton. RBI knock for Jordan Nwogu to drive in his 14th run of the season, which now ties for the team lead with Sean O'Keefe. And the Monarchs have vaulted out to a 4-0 lead here on this Sunday evening. Monarchs just keeping it going as Caleb Balgard came in to score up to second base goes Prater. So they're not done yet. Middendorf delivers, and it's over the inside corner. Strike one to Bell, who's also one for two today with a double and a ground out. Seven hits for the Monarchs. And the pitch, a curveball way out in front. Strike two to Robert Bell. Well, it's been... An up and down homestand for the Monarchs. They won two low scoring games with pitching being at the epicenter. Two to one and three to two. Tuesday, Wednesday. Fell to the Irish Hills Leprechauns Thursday and Friday. Won the opener last night against Hamilton. 0 2 fastball low and away. Ball and two strikes. Their losses to Irish Hills were 8-6 to six and 7-2. to two. A little more offense involved. And last night the offense came on late in a 6-4 come from behind win. 1-2. Curveball stays up and away. Level count 2-2 two and two on Robert Bell. One out in the fifth. Two runs in. 4 nothing. Lake Erie in the lead. Wind blowing strongly out towards left center field at about 10 miles an hour from the southeast. The 2-2, two -two, curveball high and away. Full count on Robert Bell. And that is a bit of a problem for Middendorf if you don't want to be leaving that pitch up. Dangerous proposition, especially with a guy like Robert Bell at the plate who has as much power as he does. 
Payoff. Fastball outside. Two seamer tailed off the plate. Second walk of the inning for Middendorf. Things just aren't getting better for the Hamilton Joes here in the home half of the fifth. Four nothing, Lake Erie in the lead. And the bases are loaded for Alex Lambeau. Single and a fly out for Lambeau today, one for two. And he has shown the ability to go deep. And now uh, Hamilton going to have their manager come on out, Adam Grissom, and have a quick word. Ryan Zeals, also the uh, pitching coach for the Hamilton Joes. It actually is Ryan Zeals who's out there. Grissom's still back in the dugout. But this is a Hamilton Joes staff that for as good as they have been at times, they have been even more outmanned than other teams like Lake Erie has been. Lake Erie, we were talking about them having essentially only 10 active pitchers last night, or 10 available pitchers. 11 of them were active, but Floor was not available. Monarchs got a little bit of reinforcements with uh, Brendan Wetmore coming down from Wayne State. He can possibly pitch here today, as soon as today, in fact. But Hamilton's had as few as seven pitchers at one time this year. Bases loaded for Lambeau as the mound visits over. Pitch from Middendorf, swing, fly ball, deep left field. Compton backing up, he looks up helplessly, it's gone out of here, a grand slam. Long ball, Lambeau strikes again. And the Lake Erie Monarchs have blown the doors wide open on this one. It's eight nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Lambeau picks up his second home run in as many days, his second of the season, and RBI's nine through 12. Eight nothing, Monarchs, bottom of the fifth. That was a no doubter, a first pitch fastball that Lambeau did not miss. Boy, what a fun series this has been for the Monarchs after how tough of a series it was for against Irish Hills. And you just look around and you see how much talent this team has. Strike one to Griffin Mazur, who's 0 for 2 today. And you just wonder if this team that you thought maybe things were out of reach for them to try and make a run to get into the third spot in the division. 0-1 is down and away, 1-1. One and one. And a lot of things have to happen. Don't get me wrong. For, for them to get back into it, they got to get a lot of help from the North Division teams. And they got to take care of their business on their end. The pitch, and Mazer takes a strike. One and two. But nonetheless, you know, you, you just feel like you can't count this team out any night. If they can start to get some more arms going, it's going to be scary. One, two, grounder over to short. Charging is McConnell, throws across, and his throw is in time to get Mazer. That's the second out here in the bottom of the fifth after five straight men reached for Lake Erie. It's a six run inning for the Monarchs and they are in the lead, eight zip. Pitches outside, ball one to Keegan Watson, the ninth man to bat in the inning. Fly out and a strikeout for him today. Appears to have a different bat as well. 1-0. Just inside. Off the inside corner, 2 and nothing. The Monarchs just hitting have looked so comfortable in this series. And it just felt like a lot of things were forced in that Irish Hills series, although they made a gander to try and come back on Thursday. 2-0 is high, ball 3. And Watson way ahead. but they've been hitting the ball all over and out of the yard all series. Outscoring the Joes 14-4 in the set so far. 3-0. Get over pitch for strike one. 3-1 and one on Keegan Watson. Bases empty with two outs. 8 nothing Monarchs. Middendorf from the windup, the pitch. And a foul ball off the bat of Watson. Heading well off to the right of home. 
Three and two. Hamilton getting the bullpen going. They may be uh, thinking about using position players as well. They are down arms. Payoff, Watson, foul ball to the fencing behind home. Still three and two on Keegan. Middendorf delivers. Rung up, strike three. Watson was about to throw his bat off towards the dugout and head to first. Instead, he's rung up for the second straight time, and that is all in a very productive bottom of the fifth inning. The Monarchs get six runs. Caleb Balgard, an RBI triple. Jordan Owogu, an RBI single. And Alex Lambo's grand slam may have put it out of reach. Top of the sixth is next. Monarchs in the lead, eight to nothing. This is your home for Lake Erie Monarchs baseball. Lane Schnitz Paxton working with a nice lead into the sixth inning. Foul ball off the bat of Trey Compton starts things off. Nothing in one. Lake Erie with the eight nothing lead. Kevin Peel here with you on a glorious Sunday evening. 0 1. Compton waves and misses. And it's 0 and 2. Compton with a ground out and a strikeout here today. Schnitz Paxton out of the wind. Delivers. Her ball back up the middle, and Prater will not get to it. It's through for a base hit. Hamilton collects their fourth hit of the game, and first in some time. A couple innings back to begin the fourth. Hamilton has gotten their leadoff man on now in each of the last three innings, but nothing to show for it. They've been shut out so far through five-plus. Strike over the inside corner at the knees. 0-1 to Justin McConnell. A couple of singles for him today, both infield variety. A bunt and then a chopper that he beat out to short. 0-1 breaking ball. Ooh, just off the plate. 1-1. One one. Schitt's Paxton's had it all going. Curveball, the slider, the two-seamer. Haven't seen a ton of the changeup, but that will pull some strings. 1-1 one one sails to the backstop. And that's going to enable Compton to move up to second on the wild pitch. Getting no part of that one was the catcher, Mazer. So that one sailed backwards. Two and one. Lane Schnitz Paxton with a breath. A look towards second, and he throws. Swing and a miss. Threw the heater by him. Even count it, two and two. Taking a little more of a look at the scores right now around the league. There has been some good news for the Monarchs in a couple games. Two, two curveball to the left side. Lambeau knocks it down. Does he have time to throw to first? Nope, oh, not dug out by Balgard. And that'll be another infield single for Justin McConnell. Not hitting the ball hard, but hitting it to the right spots. Having to stay put at second base was Trey Compton. Three infield singles. He has three of the five Hamilton Joes hits today, and they've been on the infield. So that tells you Elaine Schnitz Paxton's doing the job. But now he has to deal with Griffin Dorshing, always dangerous. 
0 for 2 start to the game for Dorsey. And a breaker is high, ball one. Dorsheen among the lead leaders in a couple categories entering play today. Top home run man in the league with eight through 94 at bats. 1-0 inside corner strike. Evens the count. Dorsheen with 26 RBIs coming into the day, which is good for fifth in the league. It's not added to that so far. Break even. There's a slider over the onside corner. One and two. Dorsheen stuck looking at that. Nobody out in the sixth. Eight nothing Monarchs. Runners at first and second. Playing for two is Lake Erie. Paxton throws. And a liner towards center, and it will be fielded on a couple bounces by Nwogu. Throw to the plate was on the mark, so a good job by Grissom to hold the man at third. That's Trey Compton. Three straight hits to start off this top of the sixth inning, and now you get a little bit concerned if you're the Monarchs as uh, Hamilton's up to six hits now. I know you're up 8 nothing, but there's still a lot of time to be played. Hamilton still has 12 outs to work with, and they can start to chip away if you're not careful here. Jared Kaufman has grounded into a double play and has been hit by a pitch today. He swings and misses on an inside two-seamer, 0-1. Frank Barquette, the home plate umpire, getting out of the way. That breeze feeling good as it comes off of Lake Erie. Towards the left field corner, it blows here today. Schmitz Paxton has scattered six hits, three of them in this inning alone. The pitch. And a little chopper down the first baseline. That'll stay fair. Schnitz Paxton throws it away. And that's going to bring in one, now two. Compton scores. McConnell will score. And there's runners at second and third now. And it's 8-2 as the Joes get on the board. And there's still nobody out. So that's what you're worried about as uh, mistakes, which have been a common problem for the Monarchs this year. Just a little number. And up to second base goes Kaufman on the play. And Dorshin's at third. So now you start to get a little uneasy because the Joes, they have a good offense and they can chip away. And that's what they've done. They pick up two runs here in the sixth to make it eight to two. Give credit to the Joes coming out aggressively against a guy who has dominated so far. Even when down eight, nothing. Strike one over the outside corner to Colin Homan, who has been punched out twice by Schnitz Paxton so far. Three errors on the Monarchs today. Defense has been a problem at times. A one, curveball, wave and a miss. Had him off balance, 0 and 2. Approaching the 7 o'clock hour when we normally start games here at Flat Rock Field. So we're finally in the shade behind home plate. 0 2, grounded over to third. Lambeau will force the runner back, throws a little low, but Balgard able to pick it out of there. Out number one. Especially with that being a low throw. Great underrated play by Caleb Balgard to make sure he speared that one. First out in the sixth. Runners still at second and third. Two runs in for the Joes. They are lead down eight to two. Now here's Chandler Miller. Chandler Miller with a single and a ground out today. High heater, ball one. It's Paxton working from the first base side of the rubber. 1-0, and it's fouled back to the screen. Ball and a strike. Of course, Schnitz Paxton helping his team get a win last Sunday, but boy, did he throw a gem a couple Sundays ago against the Richmond Jazz. Complete game shutout victory, which was his first win of the year. Base 27, 1-1. Ground ball off of Schnitz Paxton, goes towards second base. Weiler will have time to throw out the base runner, and he does. 1-4-3 on the put out. A little scary, though. 
though, for a Schnitz Paxton as the ball hit off of him. Coming in to score on the play is Griffin Dorsheen, and it's 8-3. Monarchs fortunately are able to get an out there. But, again, Hamilton, after giving up the sixth spot in the bottom of the fifth, they've gotten half of it back here in the sixth, at least. Now Michael Hall, who's 0 for 2, reached on air and is lined into a double play today. Curveball stays high, ball one. 8-3 to three game in the sixth. Chandler Miller picking up the RBI a moment ago. That's his 10th swing. Fly ball to right. Trying to get to it is Watson, and he's drifting over and will make the catch near the warning track. Final out here in a very active top of the sixth inning for the Hamilton Joes. They score three runs on three hits. They capitalize on an error and will leave a man left at third. Middle of the sixth inning. Hamilton trying to come back. They're down 8-3. to three. You're listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Hamilton having to go to their somewhat depleted bullpen here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Monarchs eight and the Joes three. Fastball inside, ball one to Zach Schwarzenberger. And the new pitcher is William McLean. So come in in the sixth. 1-0. And a ground ball rifled past Dorshing and into right field for a base hit. Zach Schwarzenberger's been active on the base paths today. Was hit by a pitch, walked, and now he's singled to start off the sixth. Nine hits for the Monarchs through five plus innings. Now Kelby Weiler with a chance. Monarchs closing in on having that top of the order bat, which has been so lethal in this series. Weiler 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a fly out. Fastball up and away, ball one. William McLean is from Bowling Green State University, a freshman from Mason, Ohio. 6'4", 230 pounds. And he'll try and long some important innings for Hamilton. They're trying to make a comeback, but also they need a guy to get through the remaining four tonight. 1-0. Fly ball, hit well towards center field. Moving to his left is Thayman. He's measuring. He'll make the catch. Back to first base goes Schwarzenberger. Out number one here in the bottom half of the sixth. 
And now I'll bring up Caleb Balgar. Been a nice day for Caleb Balgard. Two for three with a solo homer in the first, a fly out in the second, and an RBI triple in the fifth. So he's been running all over the place. Now a quick mound visit between McLean and Hall. That will be broken up quickly. It was on the spot earlier that the uh, nicknames Big Fly Balgard and uh, Long Ball Lambo were made up. And interestingly enough, because they both had big home runs last night, throwing over to check the base runner is Schwarzenberger. He is back in safely. We were talking about it with both of them before the game, and both of them have hit a home run today. So that's a decent trend, it appears. Pitch misses low and inside. Ball one to Caleb Balgar. William McLean. Freshman at BG, making his ninth appearance for Hamilton this summer. The one ball pitch, and it's outside to make it 2 and nothing on Balgar. He has struggled. McLean has. 0-2 record, 8.64 ERA. Has a save under his belt. Eight and a third innings pitch, nine strikeouts, six walks, 12 hits. The 2-0. Runner takes off. It's low and outside. They throw down. Schwarzenberger is safe down in second base with a stolen base. Hall, I think, thought he had him, but not quite. And it's 3-0 and on Balgard, and they're not giving him a ton to hit. Seeing as though three of his last four at-bats, he has had at least a triple, and two of them are home runs. But he has been very consistent this year for the Monarchs. Rio, and a chopper foul. I'll crash off of the third base dugout. Ball boy will grab it. Didn't go too far away from Will Prater, who's waiting on deck. Three and one. Last appearance for McLean came a week ago in Richmond, Indiana, against the Jazz, part of a 14-5 win for Hamilton. Three and one. Balgard swings, deep fly ball, right field, backing up on it, Coffee at the fence makes the catch. Tagging is Schwarzenberger, and he'll move up to third. He's trying to come home. Schwartz, the throw comes into third. Schwarzenberger's going to score on a two-base sack fly by Caleb Balgard. Or did they say he didn't make the catch? Balgard's sitting there at second base right now. Looked like it was a routine play, but Balgard's at second base, and the run will come in to score, and it's... Now nine to three. Did he drop it on the transfer? That must have been what happened out in right center field. Otherwise, it makes no sense. And now the skipper, Grissom, going to come out and have a quick word with the base umpire, Grant Henderson. Boundard's currently at second base. And Zach Schwarzenberger has come in to score. To make it a 9-3 game, so the Monarchs quickly battle back. And it looks like they're going to give him an error on the transfer. And that's the second error on Hamilton. Looked like it was a play he should have had, but just didn't make the catch. I looked down anticipating a catch, and I was seeing what Zach Schwarzenberger was doing because he was tagging up and coming towards home. Intriguing stuff. It was a, a transfer issue, so an error will go against Coffee out in right field. And a run scores with one out. And now a liner towards right center. That one's falling fast, and the catch is not quite made. It drops out of the glove of Thamen. And so Will Brader will have himself a single. He's now two for four today. Wow, what an interesting inning. Not quite made the catch. So no RBI for Balgard on that play because it was all due to an error. I didn't know if Thayman was going to have the range to get all the way out there, and he seemed to have it, just couldn't make the catch. 
Now a curveball is outside ball one to Jordan Nwogu. Two for three today is Nwogu. He's scored twice and has driven in a run as well. 9-3 Monarchs. They're up to 10 hits in the game. Offense going off again on a Sunday. 1-0, check swing. Nwogu went too far on a dirt ball that was blocked nicely by Hall. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. And a run is in. At least one. Monarchs have scored now in three of the six innings today. All the other two have been multi-run innings, including the huge six spot in the bottom of the fifth. Break even. Sales outside. Two and one on Jordan Nwogu. You've got a top of the lineup right now. Tim Brown has that's just not fun trying to get out. Nwogu swung a good stick all year. Palgarn has two. It just seems like it's been overshadowed by other factors at times. 2-1 downstairs, 3-1. and one. one of those just not having enough arms. Brad Merritt's had quite the job here in his first season as the assistant coach and the pitching coach of managing these pitchers and getting as much out of them without you know, keeping them in too long. 3-1 is low, ball four. So a walk to Nwogu. Prater up to second, and up to third goes Balgard. Sacks are full, and that didn't go very well for Hamilton the last time the bases were loaded. Alex Lambo hit a home run in the fifth. And this guy coming up has a lot of home run power, Robert Bell. 1-2, one, 1-4-2 two, one, two with a walk. A run scored tonight for Bell, and he has an RBI. Fastball at the knees, inside corner, strike one. Ryan Middendorf, who was the starter today for Hamilton, goes five innings, throws 93 pitches, opposed 25 batters. A one curveball, check swing, too far. Bell went, two strikeouts. Four strikeouts, two walks, scattered eight hits, hit a batter, and allowed eight earned runs. That's going to raise the 2.03 ERA. Swing and a fly ball towards the left field line. It's ducking down for a base hit. And one run's coming in. Balgard, now Prater crosses the plate. Two-run single for Robert Bell. It's a three-RBI day for Robert Bell. And the Monarchs are into double figures in scoring, 11 hits and now 11 runs. They're in the lead 11 to three. Great piece of hitting inside out of that baseball that the catcher Hall wanted further outside and it got too much of the plate. And Robert Bell just didn't miss it. Now Alex Lambeau looks at strike one over the outside corner. Well, we all know what Lambeau did his last time up in the fifth, a grand slam. He also has a single and a fly out today. He hit that fly out pretty decently to left way back in the first. The pitch, and he chases a curveball in just above the dirt. No balls and two strikes. So it's a three-run inning for the Monarchs. And the 0-2, well outside. Ball and two strikes on Alex Lambeau from Loyola Marymount. Griffin Mazur taking his cuts in the on-deck circle. Monarchs had nine men come to the plate last inning. They've had seven come up in this inning. They've been moving pretty quickly, though. One, two. And a high pitch popped up towards third. Jared Kaufman is fading into foul territory, now back towards the line, and he waits on it and puts it away. Two outs, bottom of the sixth, three runs in. Wogu's at second, Bell's at first. 11-3, Lake Erie in the lead. So after Hamilton made things a little uneasy, they got three runs in the top of this inning to make it 8-3. Monarchs have a three spot right back. Here's Griffin Mazur, 0-3. Him and Keegan Watson 
along with Kelby Weiler. The only ones to not get on base yet. Swing and a miss by Mazer, 0 and 1. So I guess if you've had a you know a day getting on base, you've gotten on a couple times, and if you haven't gotten on, you're still looking to. Mazer is trying to do that. Catcher from Cal Irvine. 0 1. Found away to the right in the air. Two strike count. Monarchs have now scored six runs or more in three of their last four games. 0-2. And another towering pop-up up the elevator shaft. This is going to be a tough one to measure. Kaufman has it all the way. Connell was putting his arms up in the air. Zane, he didn't know where it was. But fortunately for the Joes, Kaufman makes the catch. Final out, bottom of the sixth inning. But it's another... Very effective inning for the Monarchs. They score three runs. They're able to capitalize on an error on a dropped pop-up. And a two-run single by Robert Bell extends the lead. At the end of six, Monarchs 11, Joes three. This is your home for Lake Erie Monarchs baseball. We're on to the seventh. Just a couple innings left in this season-long six-game homestand. Hard to believe it is coming to an end. It's been mostly a good week for the Monarchs. It's been a good night tonight, 11-3. to They're in front. Kevin Peel here with you. Addison Coffey, Tyler Thaman, Trey Compton will take swings against Wayne Schnitz Paxton in this inning. Strike one called to Coffey. Makes it 0-1. Coffee 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout today. 0-1 is fouled off at home plate off the inside of Coffee's ankle. No balls and two strikes. Addison Coffee had that weird play go against him and the Joes in the bottom of the sixth inning as he uh, dropped the ball on the transfer from his mitt to his hand. And it was a two-base error that permitted Schwarzenberger to come in and score from second, and Balgard got up to second. He later scored on the two-run single by Robert Bell. Pitch high and tight, one ball and two strikes. So when things are going wrong, they go wrong. Monarchs have experienced that sentiment quite a bit at times in 2018. 1-2 is low in it. Even count now on Coffee. His... <laughs> Teammates from the dugout earlier in the game were calling him Cafe. 2-2. Two -two. And that got part of the bat, but mostly his hand. And Coffey is hit by a pitch. Second hit batsman for Lane Schnitz Paxton here, here today. And now uh, Coffey appears to uh, be jawing a little bit. And Griffin Mazer... Having to be settled down, Coffee and Mazer were barking at each other in an 11-3 game, and 
the home plate umpire making sure that things were settled down immediately. Don't want things to get out of hand here. Definitely Lane Schnitz Paxton was not on purpose trying to hit him. Not when you're up eight runs in a game and just trying to get out of here with a win. A swing and a miss. Big swing from Thayman, 0 and 1. Line out and a strikeout for Tyler Thayman today out of the nine hole. Joe's being out hit 11 to 6. Scoreboard reads 11 to 3 Monarchs. Another inside pitch. That's a ball. 1 and 1. Monarchs hit the road to take on the Grand Lake Mariners in Salina on Tuesday. 1-1 one, one inside, backing him off the plate, 2-1. Two, and one. two in Salina, two against the Xenia Scouts near Dayton Thursday and Friday. And then two against the Leprechauns next week. 2-1 is high and in, and Schnitz Paxton's coming in a lot here. 3-1. and one. Nobody out, and a man at first in the seventh. Schitt's Paxton gets the sign and delivers to Seamer at the knees on the outside corner. Full count on Tyler Thayman, starting center fielder for the Hamilton Joes. Sporting the number 21, gripping the bat barehanded. 3-2 on the ground over to third. Lambeau on to second for one. Weiler's throw to first. Dug out by Balgard. Double play. What a job by Balgard to stretch out and give himself the best opportunity to turn that double play. He had to because Thayman was dashing down the line and a close play. But the uh, leadoff hit batsman is erased five to four on the ground ball hit by Thayman. Coffee and Thayman are out. And there's two downs, two outs now. And the bases are empty for Trey Compton. Curveball high, ball one. Single and a run scored in the sixth for Compton, otherwise 0 for 2 today. Another two-seamer riding inside, 2-0. Two Lane Schnitz Paxton entered the inning with 83 pitches. And uh, we'll see if he can stay under 100 while getting through the seventh. Here's a sinking line drive to second. Weiler checks the label. On to Balgard at first, final out. Here in the top of the seventh inning. So the bottom of the seventh is coming up next. It's stretch time, and the Monarchs are well in command, up 11-3. to three. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball. Monarchs and Joes coming towards the end of this weekend series. Bottom of the seventh, and Hamilton is down 11-3 to Lake Erie. Want to remind you fans, check out our YouTube page. You can find the link through LakeErieMonarchs.com under the media section, Monarchs TV. It has full games online if you didn't get a chance to watch it live. Also highlights, pregame and postgame interviews. Take a look. Find your favorite player today. Casey O'Laughlin is in there, swinging a miss for strike one. O'Laughlin entered in the seventh inning as he entered the game for Keegan Watson in the seven hole. 0 1 is fouled off to the left. No balls and two strikes. O'Laughlin with a 194 average, five RBIs. 
He came in to play center field. Watson was in right, so Nwogu transitioned to right field. The 0-2, and a ground ball over towards short, and it gets over the glove of McConnell and into center field. Uh, that's most likely going to be a base hit. Yes, it will be. Hit number 12 for the Monarchs. Well, that was one that just couldn't be dug out. And it almost didn't look like McConnell was going as quickly as he could over towards the baseball. Couldn't cut it off. So 12 hits now for the Monarchs. Now a pitch is high and away, and a check swing went too far, says Grant Henderson, our base umpire, to Zach Schwarzenberger, 0-1. Schwarzenberger on base all three times, was hit by a pitch, walked and scored in the fifth, singled and scored in the sixth. Liner heading well foul on a play over top of the third base dugout. Two strike count on Schwarzenberger, still batting on the left side, the switch hitter, against the righty William McLean, who allowed three inning or three runs in the sixth inning. 0 oh, 2. And it's upstairs. Ball on two strikes to Schwarzenberger. Three runs on three hits, an error in that sixth inning for the Monarchs. And back to first goes O'Loughlin as he draws a throw from McLean. And it looks like all of those runs were earned against McLean because the inning would have continued anyway. Nope, the one with Baugard is not earned. And a foul ball at the plate. Still alive is Schwarzenberger, one and two. So two of those runs were earned. Monarchs have scored in half of the innings that they've batted in today. They've all been multi-run innings. Hamilton got just three runs in the top of the sixth, and the Monarchs answered with three of their own in the bottom of the sixth. But they vaulted themselves out to an 8-0 lead after a six-run fifth. 1-2 from McLean. Swing and a miss, strike three. Schwarzenberger chasing the two-seamer tailing away. Strikeout number one of the inning for McLean and his first of the contest. Still at first is O'Loughlin after his single to start off the inning. Now Kelby Weiler digs in, 0 for 3. Two air outs and a strikeout for him. The pitch as a liner and now he'll have a hit as it's over the shortstop McConnell's head into left center. Up to second goes O'Loughlin. There's hit number 13 for the Lake Erie Monarchs. Taking a first pitch fastball. Monarchs have not missed first pitch fastballs here today. Part of it may be location from the Hamilton Joes, not putting it where they need to, but they just simply put have not missed them either. This guy hasn't. Caleb Balgard has put four balls in play once one was a homer, one was a triple, one was a deep fly ball to right center, and the other was a fly ball to center. Going too far on a curveball that was well outside was Balgard, 0-1. So officially he's two for four. But the last time up in the sixth, reached on the drop pop-up as Addison Coffey had an issue with the exchange from the mitt to his hand. And Balgar got into second, Schwarzenberger scored. Now 0-1, another pop-up towards center field, dropping for a hit. And Casey O'Loughlin is going to stay put at third as the Monarchs have three hits in the inning, 14 for the game now, and Balgar has three hits as well. We need to get Balgar another at bat. He is a double short of the cycle now. And if that wasn't an error, which it blatantly was an error on Coffee with the uh, dropped exchange. He technically would have a cycle here today. Bases are loaded once again, full of Monarchs in the bottom of the seventh. And McLean goes down low with ball one. 
Will Prater with two straight singles and two straight runs scored in the game. Started 0 for 2 with two air outs. 1 out. And on the hands, back to the fencing behind home. I think Brader wanted that one. He turned away from home plate with a pained expression on his face. One and one. Eleven to three, the score in the seventh. McLean looking in. He pitches the break even. And there's a cut and a miss. Chasing the changeup was Will Prater. One and two. William McLean pitched an inning against the Richmond Jazz last Sunday, allowing two earned runs on three hits, two walks, and a strikeout, facing eight most batters he has faced this year. One, two, and a little number towards third, and able to make a play throwing on to second base was Kaufman. Fielder's choice will bring in a run to make it 12 to three Monarchs. And they score once again here in the bottom of the seventh. Great job by Prater just to put it in play. Out five to four was Caleb Balgard. Up to third goes Kelby Weiler and scoring was Griffin Mazer. 12-3 Lake Erie. Here in the seventh, and now Jordan Wolgu with another chance. Runners on the corners and two down. And a curveball is grooved to left. Another base hit for Jordan Wolgu, and it's another run-producing base hit. Two RBI singles today for Jordan Wolgu. And on the season, he's up to 15 RBIs now. Prater's at second, Wogu's at first, and scoring is Weiler. 13-3 Monarchs here in the bottom of the seventh. Another tremendous offensive performance. Now Robert Bell needs inside corner strike. Bell on base three times, a double, a single. That was a two-run single in the sixth. Walked and scored in the fifth. Three U, he was retired in the third. Two outs and a busy bottom of the seventh. Downstairs. One and one the count on Bell. Scorebook getting a little bit jumbled as we continue on here. This is their third best offensive performance of the year so far. 1-1, one, one, fly ball, deep left center field. Thayman and Compton moving over, and Thayman cannot make the catch as it goes off of his glove. Throw comes into third, RBI double for Robert Bell. The inning continues as Robert Bell will pick up his third RBI of the day. And he's up to 15 now on the season. Monarchs just keep on going. 14-3, here in the bottom of the seventh. It's another three-run inning, and the Monarchs are up to 16 hits. Boy, they are just punishing the baseball on William McLean right now. Runners at second and third with two outs for Alex Lambeau. They're just hitting the ball hard everywhere. Pitch outside, ball one. And when you're doing that, you're doing what you need to do. Putting the ball in play, and it's paid off in a big way. Now outside, ball two, as Hall was able to stop it just enough so it didn't get to the screen, two and nothing. Monarchs have scored 12 runs over the last three innings. Blow this one open, 2-0. Lambeau fists one foul. Pop up into the grandstands down the first base side. Two balls and a strike. We are now at the two-hour mark of this game. And for as many runs that have been scored, it's not so bad to be in the bottom of the seventh inning with two outs, two men on in a 14-3 game. And you're only at two hours. 2-1, two fastball blown by for strike two. Lambeau's day has been busy. 
single and a grand slam. He has a couple pop outs as well. Lambeau is homered in back to back days. 2 2. And it bounces in and away from Hall towards the first baseline, but he keeps it close enough at hand. And in a 14 3 game, Brad Merritt's not going to be sending base runners very much. This was a 2 0 game through four and a half innings. Then the Monarchs' offense blew up. 3 2 ground ball foul off the fencing down the third baseline. Still 3 and 2. Now the question will be well, is Lane Schnitz Paxton going to come out here for the top of the eighth? He's at 97 pitches for the game. So he's borderline, and maybe he shouldn't come out, but he has pitched well. Payoff pitch to Lambeau. Low and outside, ball four, and McLean cannot get out of the inning quite yet. Bases are loaded of Monarchs again. 14-3, Lake Erie, bottom half of the seventh. And now Griffin Mazer comes up hungry for his first hit of the day. Two fly outs, a ground out, and a strikeout for Mazer. Lambeau is at first, Bell at second, and Wogo at third. Popped up foul out of play, nothing in one. Sixteen to six, the Monarchs have out hit the Hamilton Joes here today. Joes just about a game out of a playoff spot in the south. Oh one taken for a strike, nothing in two. So this series isn't gonna break their backs here. But it is going to be a little bit discouraging. Last night was a very winnable game, and then this one was a runaway train in favor of the Monarchs. Monarchs have a lot of work to do and need wins quickly. 0-2 bounces into the left-handed batter's box. Nice block by Hall, who's been busy in this inning. Ball and two strikes on Griffin Mazer. That's two home runs this year. We've already seen a grand slam. Out of the windup, the one-two. Mazer fly ball, deep left field. It's hooking. Will it stay fair? No, it won't. It will get foul. Oh. We were on a course towards running towards <laughs> the 27-8 game against Saginaw nine days ago if that ball left the yard. And it was close. The wind partially blowing it more foul, but Mazer was just a touch out in front of it. Clayne for his psyche, he's got to get out of this inning. One, two, backhanded nicely by Hall. Pitch that was way away, two and two. Problem for McLean right now, it seems like when he throws strikes, it's right over the middle of the plate, and it's something the Monarchs can easily handle. If not, if he's missing, he's missing by a lot. Two, two, fastball outside, missing by a lot again. Full count, nowhere to put Griffin Mazer. Bases loaded, two down in the seventh. Three runs are in. It's 14-3, Monarchs. Payoff. Mazer fouls one off. Fine home. Got one off the end of the bat. Eighth pitch coming up. McLean has allowed six runs, and at this point, you know, with Hamilton not having a ton of arms and have really been struggling to find guys throughout the entirety of the season. Getting reinforcements has been a problem. McLean's just got to eat it here. 3-2, runners take off. Mazer swings and misses for strike three. So he just misses a grand slam, and then ultimately McLean able to blow a fastball by him and end the inning. But the Monarchs bat around again. They score three more, and we head to the top of the eighth inning here at Flat Rock Field. It's all Monarchs on this Sunday evening, 14-3. You are listening to MonarchsRadio.com.
Lake Erie Monarchs baseball will hit the road for a six-game road trip coming up this week. Make sure to follow LakeErieMonarchs.com and also us on social media and GLL underscore Monarchs and Lake Erie Monarchs on Facebook to find out the broadcast times and location right here on MonarchsRadio.com of our upcoming broadcasts. Lane Schnitz Paxton back to work in the eighth. Gets a one-pitch ground ball past the diving Balgard who was drawn in. And that's a base hit for Justin McConnell. It's a four-hit game for Justin McConnell. He had three infield singles, and now he hits one to the outfield. Seven hits for the Joes. He has four of them. Yeah, talk about trying to adjust appropriately to stop the infield singles. Balgard moves in, and then a ground ball is rocketed right past him for a single. Now Griffin Dorshing takes ball one outside, one and out. Dorshing on twice, reached on air in the first, struck out in the fourth, singled and scored in the sixth. 14-3 Monarchs, top of the eighth. Schnitz Paxton has a two-seamer come over the outside corner for strike one. So that's pitch number 100 for Lane Schnitz Paxton. He is over the century mark. Monarchs getting a man up and throwing in the bullpen. 1-1. Dorshin, liner, hooking, foul down the third base line. That was a missile. Dorshin has been so good for this Hamilton Joes team this year. Batting average, very respectable coming into today's action. And he kept the Joes right in contention last night till the end. 277 average coming in for Dorshin. 1-2. And it's low and away. Nice job getting out of the crouch by Mazur to scoop that one up. Two balls and two strikes. And Lane deals a pitch over the inside corner, found off by Dorshin to stay alive and keep the count at two and two with no one out in the eighth. And a man at first. Sun is still not... Going down in the west, 2-2, two -two. and Dorshin, a grounder. That one's fair down the third baseline, past Balgard. Second straight hit, heading towards third is Justin McConnell, and into second base is Dorshin with a double, his sixth double of the season. And the Monarchs, who are up 14-3, may have to think about pulling the plug, though, unfortunately, with him already over, well over now, 100 pitches. And two hits to start off the inning. Eight hits against Lane Schnitz Paxton today. Here's Jared Kaufman. Infield is back. 0 for 3 today is Kaufman. Strike one to him over the outside corner. Make it 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth. It's grounded into a double play and reached on an error. 0 1. And a skipper into the left-handed batter's box, which is vacant. Again, Mazur going to his right to block it. Even count at one and one. A lefty was up and throwing. Couldn't quite get the number. One, one. Fly ball hit towards right. Nwogu measuring. Now coming in, makes the catch. Runners coming home. Nwogu's throw is a missile to the plate. And they got him for a double play. Jordan Nwogu has done it all with the bat this year, and he shows off that electric arm from right field, throwing a seed right to home. He guns him out, and that is a double play. Griffin Dorshin still at second, and the Monarchs will keep their 14-3 lead. Wow, that was impressive. Out 9-2 on the double play. So now here's Colin Homan. And he's hit by a pitch up in the chest area. Not what you want to see from Lane Schnitz Paxton, who hits his third man of the day. Command has been a little sketchy at times. Dorshin at second, Homan at first with two outs. 14 3 game in the eighth. Chandler Miller, one for three with an RBI today, grounded down into an RBI in the sixth. 
Fastball is chopped towards Balgard, and that will be just foul to the left of the third base line. He was ready to go to the third base bag to get the five unassisted put out. Instead, Miller will stay up 0-1. So we've seen all the highlights with the bats today, and now we see one defensively. Things are going well. They're going well for the Monarchs, and they have in this series. 0-1 over the inside corner, two-strike count on Chandler Miller. Schnitz Paxton from the first base side of the rubber, and time will be called. Schnitz Paxton was the first one to go over 110 pitches this year for the Monarchs pitching staff when he had that complete game shutout against Richmond two weeks ago. 0-2, fly ball hit high towards right field, going towards the corner, coming over Nwogu will make the catch in foul ground as he ends up right against the fence for out number three. And the Monarchs will sidestep a couple of hits in the inning. Jordan Nwogu's double play is the highlight of the inning as the Hamilton Joes do not score in the eighth. Middle of the eighth coming up, Monarchs 14 in the Joes three. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. What an exciting day it's been for the Lake Erie Monarchs. 14-3 is the score here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bottom three coming up, Casey O'Laughlin, Zach Schwarzenberger, Kelby Weiler. To face a new pitcher, it's Anthony Bell. The sophomore from the University of Cincinnati is in there to try and get three outs. Her ball is lined and it's dropped by Miller. Does he have time to throw over? No, he does not. And we'll see what that one is in the official scoring. They're going to give Casey O'Laughlin a single on the play. And O'Laughlin has two singles now. Single to start off the seventh inning after coming in for Keegan Watson. And he singles again here to start the eighth. Hit number 17 for the Monarchs. Now a pitch to Schwarzenberger. Foul tipped at home plate. Strike one. Schwarzenberger 
is one for two today. He got on base his first three times, hit by a pitch, walk, and a single. He struck out in the seventh for the first out of the inning. 0-1. Curve ball over to second it goes. They'll get the lead man at second, and no play at first. Fielder's choice, Schwarzenberger will ground into. Retired 4-6 to six is O'Laughlin. So Bell, it's a relatively quick out here in the bottom of the eighth. Anthony Bell pitching for the fourth time this season. No record. 4.9 ERA, three and two-thirds innings out of the pen. Weiler in the batter's box, swinging right away on a ball that was in on the hands, fouled off. Weiler one for four with a single and a run scored today. Two strikeouts, four walks, one hit allowed for Bell. Also one for six batting this year is Bell. And he played yesterday in that role. Oh, one pitch comes just above the head of Kelby Weiler, who was not too thrilled with the location of that one and one. Anthony Bell, four of those six at bats, where yesterday he went 0 for 4 as the designated hitter in the eighth spot of the lineup for Hamilton. 1-1 one, one from Bell, and threw it by him for strike two. 1-2 and two on Kelby Weiler. Last appearance on the mound came three days ago in Lima. Locos got the win on that day, 7-2. to two. Time called at home plate, and everyone will reset. Bell pitched an inning and two-thirds, allowed an unearned run, two walks, and a strikeout, faced eight. One, two. Sky high. Getting Hall out of his crouch, two balls and two strikes. That breeze cooling things down as we continue to progress through this Sunday evening. Breath from Bell, 2-2, two -two, skips in. And blocking it nicely is Hall behind the plate. Not allowing Schwarzenberger to move up at first. One out in the bottom of the eighth, 14-3, Lake Erie Monarchs. Seeking a sweep of this series, which have been their second sweep of the season, and a 4-2 and two homestand. 3-2, curve ball, back to the fencing behind home. Cow remains full on Kelby. Top of the order on deck, Caleb Balgard for the Monarchs. We're getting done a little earlier tonight. Last night's game was a quick one. 3-2, fly ball hit to right. Coffee coming in, and he'll grab it. Back to first, Schwarzenberger. Two outs in the eighth for the Monarchs. 14-3. Monarchs in the lead. Now here's Caleb Balgar. So he has another chance to hit for the cycle. Balgar with a homer, a triple, and a single today. He reached on a two-base error in the sixth and flew out to left center in the second. Anthony Bell pitches, and Balgar will foul one off to the right. No balls and a strike. Monarchs with 17 hits. Schwarzenberger still at first base, getting a very modest lead with the score being the way it is. And the 0-1. And a ground ball will get to second. On to second for one. That's all they need as Schwarzenberger is forced. And Balgarn grounds into a fielder's choice to end the bottom of the eighth. And he will unfortunately come up a double short of the cycle, it appears here today. But the Monarchs are a happy bunch right now as we head to the ninth. Final three outs for Hamilton are coming up. 14-3, Lake Erie. You are listening to your home for Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball, monarchsradio.com.
Lake Erie Monarchs three outs away from a series sweep of the Hamilton Joes. 14-3, they lead it. It's a football score. Here's the top of the ninth inning begins. We also get our first look at a new Monarchs pitcher. Brandon Brendan Wetmore is the new guy on. And his first one is high and away, ball one. Brendan Wetmore, 5'11", 150 pounds from Wayne State University. He and Dylan McInerney, both from Wayne State in Detroit. One out. And swing and a miss at a high fastball, one and one. An upcoming senior from Westland, Michigan. And he's filling a big role here for the Monarchs as he uh, comes out to pitch his first inning. Monarchs, of course, arms have been at a premium this year. 1-1, one, one, down and in. 2-1 and one on Michael Hall, who's leading off the events here in the ninth. 0 for 3, although he's been on once via an error by shortstop Will Prater. 2-1 on the ground over to third. Caleb Balgar, the new third baseman, has it. Zips it across, and the throw is wide, and Slattery was pulled off. So Balgar picks up an error after uh, playing the first the eight right innings fielder, five, at third Hall, first base. He's now at five. first base, the third base. So Brendan Wetmore... The tough start to the inning. Monarchs have four errors today, but their offense has uh, been too much and has overcome the four errors. 14-3, our score. Slider inside corner for a strike from Wetmore to Addison Coffey. Ground out a strikeout. He's also been hit by a pitch today. A one to coffee and tying away. Even the count up at one and one. So Alex Lambeau also moves over to short with Balgard going to third base. Casey Slattery has entered the game for the Monarchs. Wetmore looks towards first is one one. It is lying foul back to the screen right near our camera. And it's one ball and two strikes. And the camera essentially survived. To move it down a little bit. One and two on Addison Coffey. One two from Wetmore. Her ball, another high one, fouled away. And it's still a ball and two strikes. Brendan, a Wayne State Warrior. Wetmore with a look towards first, a one, two, and he blew it by him for strike three. First strikeout as a Monarch for Brendan Wetmore, and it comes against Addison Coffey. So that's the first out here in the Visiting half of the ninth. Michael Hall still at first after reaching on an error. And swinging a foul ball hit by Tyler Thayman 0 and 1. Thayman still looking for his first hit. 0 for 3 is also grounded into a double play today. John Glenn High School in Westland is where Brendan went to school. And he has some fascinating info on him, in fact. 0-1. And this one's scorched towards left field, and it's down and rolling towards the corner. Michael Hall heading towards third. He'll stop there as the throw comes into the cutoff man, Lambo. A double is the ninth hit of the game for the Hamilton Joes. 14-3, two runners in scoring position with one out in the top of the ninth. And Tyler Thayman, with that hit, picks up his uh, first double of the season, in fact, for him. Big confidence swing. And now here's Trey Compton. Leadoff man will pop one up to center field. 
Coming in, Casey O'Laughlin makes the catch. Runner going to bluff coming home. O'Laughlin's throw cut off by Slattery near the mound. And there are two outs now here in the top of the ninth inning as Hamilton is down to their final out here in this series. 14-3 is the score. And that will bring up Justin McConnell. <laughs> what a day it's been for Justin McConnell. He has four singles, three of them infield singles, and one of them, the last one, was ripped past Caleb Balgard. And into left field. That started the eighth. Brendan Wetmore delivers. Swing, fly ball towards right. Nwogu coming towards the line, circling, makes the catch. And that's the ball game. And the Lake Erie Monarchs get it done. A 14-3 win here today. They sweep the series against the Hamilton Joes. What a game it was for the Lake Erie Monarchs as they get it done here today. The Joes fall to 11 and 15. They'll fall, will stay actually seven back of now 17 and seven Southern Ohio who fell today. And the Monarchs who were five and a half back of 14 and nine Lima entering the day. We'll have to see where they go, but as of right now, they pull to within five. Now looking at the scoreboard, the Locos beat the Jazz today. So the Monarchs will stay five and a half back of the leaders in the South Division. But nonetheless, a good victory for the Lake Erie Monarchs here today as they win it by a final count of 14 to three. The Monarchs get this one done at eight o'clock, so it was two hours and 28 minutes for the second consecutive day, right at 8 p.m. They get the W and yesterday's game started in actually a 10 minutes from now. But the Monarchs, they score 14 runs today on 17 hits. They commit four errors, so in reality, they overcome those errors. It was not a good day for them in that category. But nonetheless, they did a great job getting runners home. They leave just eight on base, but many of them were left when the game was already, in reality, well out of hand. Three runs on nine hits. Two errors for the Hamilton Joes here today. And they left not too many on base because Lane Schnitz Paxton really held them at bay. They left six. Make it eight on the base paths with the uh, two that they left in the ninth inning. Again, two hours and 28 minutes, the time of game here today as the Monarchs stay five and a half games back in the North Division with the triumph. Next up, the Monarchs will head to Salina for a series that begins. Two 705 starts are coming up uh, for the Monarchs the next uh, two days, Tuesday, Wednesday. Six road games in total for the Monarchs coming up here real soon. And how about Brendan Wetmore, who uh, backs up Lane Schnitz Paxton, throws his first inning scoreless as he holds the uh, Hamilton Joes off the board here today. The winner is Lane Schnitz Paxton. He improves to three and two, while Ryan Middendorf is saddled with his first loss of the season. He falls to three and one. 14 3, the final score here today as the Monarchs get the victory. Well, we will uh, most likely be getting a post game interview for you, so make sure to head on over to our. Uh, YouTube page and also Facebook and Twitter will have that for you on the post-game show as uh, we uh, will have a tough time trying to figure out who we want to talk to because of how uh, prolific of a day this was for the Lake Erie Monarchs. But they win it by a final count of 14-3. to Thanks so much for joining us here on MonarchsRadio.com. I am Kevin Peel saying so long until Salina here from Flat Rock Field in Flat Rock, Michigan. You have been listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Good night.